We can put data into one of two groups, numerical or categorical. Numerical data typically consists of numbers that measure things. For example, shoe size, number of pets owned, grades received on assignments, number of hours spent studying, or the amount of money in your pocket. All of these can be measured, and so they're numerical data. Some numbers are not numerical data, and we have to be careful. Examples include zip codes, student numbers, and telephone numbers. While they're numbers, they're not numerical data. They're categorical, which we'll speak of in just a moment. So if you want to know if a set of numbers is numerical data, and you're really not sure, here's the question you should ask yourself. Could you find the average of it? If you can find the average of something, say the average number of pets owned, or the average shoe size, then it is numerical. If you could not find the average, for example, the average telephone number, then it is not numerical. Our second group of data is known as categorical data. Categorical data involves questions that do not involve numbers that measure things. Categorical data includes things such as gender, male or female, descriptive quantities such as dozens or hundreds, descriptions that don't give exact numbers, as well as voting preference. Don't forget we also have things like zip codes and telephone numbers. In our first exercise, we want to determine if each of these describes numerical or categorical data. Remember, if an exact quantity is given to you, you have numerical data. If an exact quantity is not given to you, just a description or a range of data, then we're dealing with categorical data. Please pause the video here and complete the exercise. In our first example, we have 735 plants on display at the gardening expo. This is an example of numerical data. There were 27 more plants on display this year than last year. 27 more doesn't allow me to have an exact quantity. I don't know how many plants there were, and so this is categorical. There were scores of plants on display at the expo. One score is equal to 20, but we're told just that there were scores. We don't know how many there were, and so this is categorical. It's not an exact quantity. In a survey, 52 people said that they don't think we shouldn't be involved with the Syrian conflict. This is an exact quantity. It's an example of numerical data. Finally, in a survey, people said they spend between five and six hours per week following local and national politics. This is a range of values, and so this is categorical data. We can also categorize data by how many pieces of information you have, one or two. An example includes project scores. If you only have that one piece of data, we call it univariate. We only collected one kind of information, the scores that people received on a project. If you have two pieces of information, for example, the project scores and the number of hours that were spent on the project, now you have two pieces of information, and so you have bivariate data. In our second exercise, we have four scenarios. Read each scenario. Determine whether one or two pieces of information is being collected and looked at. If it's one, classify it as univariate. If there are two, classify it as bivariate. Please pause the video and complete the exercise. Mr. Jones making a list of the number of computers is univariate. Mrs. Jarvis writing down the computer serial number and the condition of the machine is bivariate. The total amount of the federal budget is univariate. We only have one amount. The amount of the budget and the amount of deficit or surplus is known as bivariate. Organizing information is very easy if you use the right tools. With univariate data, we saw we could use a frequency table. We'd make a list of the number of pets and indicate in the table how many people had that number. Let's suppose you have bivariate data. We collected the number of pets and the gender of the person. For this, we use a two-way frequency table. Let's take a look at an example. In this two-way frequency table, we have the number of males and number of females who got each grade on a science project in a science class. We can see in the table that there were nine males 
who got an A. 12 females who got an A. 18 males who got a B. And 14 females got a B. 8 males got a C. 11 females got a C. And so on and so forth. We often put columns to total the amounts at the side and on the bottom of the table. We simply add up and down. The total number of males is 38. The total number of females is 42. We simply added all the numbers in the column. We can also find out the total number of students who got A's. If we add across 9 males and 12 females, that gives me 21 people who got an A. With the B, 18 males and 14 females, 32 people got a B. And we can add across 19 people got a C, 5 got a D, and 3 got an F. If we add up the row across the bottom, the 38 and the 42, that gives us a total of 80. That's 38 males and 42 females that give us a total of 80 people. If we add the total column on the right, we add up all the people who got A's, B's, C's, D's, and F's, that also adds up to 80. Now when you typically get a table like this filled out for you, usually nothing's in color, but you can easily take highlighters to color anything in that you'd like. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. The first question is how many students had a grade of A? We look at the table, 21 people in total got an A. How many males were surveyed altogether? A total of 38. 38 males were surveyed in our project. How many males earned a grade of A? Well, we look at the males, 9 males earned a grade of A. How many students earned a grade of B or C? Well, 32 earned a B, 19 earned a C. That's a total of 51 students. The remaining exercises are for you to try. Please pause the video and complete the exercise. In this exercise, we find that 19 students have a C. We have a total of 42 females and that there are 12 females who earned a grade of A. We also learned that there were 26 males who earned a grade of B or C and 25 females who earned a grade of B or C. Two terms you want to be familiar with are joint frequencies and marginal frequencies. Marginal frequencies are, as the name suggests, the numbers in the outer margins of the table. These are called the marginal frequencies. It's the total row and the total column. The numbers on the inside of the table are known as the joint frequencies. In our third and final exercise, we've conducted a study to determine whether or not people who are allergic to animals have pets. The results are recorded in the two-way frequency table. We ask each respondent two questions. Are you allergic to animals and do you have a pet? There's a series of five questions that we'd like for you to answer. Please pause the video here and complete exercise three. We found that there were a total of 500 people surveyed. 32 people have a pet but are allergic to animals, and 63 people do not have a pet and are not allergic to animals. We also found out that a total of 224 people in our study were allergic to animals. Lastly, we found out that 245 people have pets. We now know that there are two types of data, categorical and numerical. We know that if we have bivariate data, meaning we have two pieces of information, we can use a two-way frequency table. A two-way frequency table has the marginal frequencies on the outside in the total column and the total row, and the numbers within the rows and columns themselves are known as the joint frequencies.